Hello, I am Jay Prakash Narayan, interacting with you in Ask JP. Hello, let's take a question from Chaitanya Lekharaj from Pune. He is a research associate in a think tank. Let's take his question and ask JP today. Chaitanya, the Hello, floor sir, is yours. I am Chaitanya Lekharaj from Pune. I would like to know your views on who a democratically responsible or a democratically accountable citizen is and how does such citizens affect good governance. Thank you. Thank you, Chaitanya. It's a very thoughtful question, a philosophical question in some respects. What is a democratically responsible or accountable citizen? Let me cite a very insightful philosopher. I think Reinhold Neighbor. He said, man's capacity for justice makes democracy possible. Man's inclination to injustice makes democracy necessary. I think it's an extremely thoughtful and very insightful comment. As human society, all human beings have the inherent capacity for justice, at least the bulk of the human beings. Justice means equity, justice means fair play, justice means equal treatment of all people, not taking something that is not due from others, not exploiting others. Justice means all people enjoying the same rights in equal measure, all rights getting protection. Justice means wrongdoing is punished equally in respect of all people. Justice means you get just rewards for your hard work and your innovation and for your talent. But man also has inclination to injustice. There's always a tendency to appropriate something which is not theirs, at least on the part of some people. So all human society, as opposed to animal society, or other animal society, is about reconciliation of these two. The capacity for justice and inclination to injustice. Animals don't require a society, they don't require laws, they don't have these deep philosophical debates because instinct guides their actions. Millennia or millions of years of instinct and genes, they tell them what to do. Sometimes they kill, sometimes they die. They cooperate, they confront. But because the basic instincts of survival, your food and your protection from the enemies, and your procreation, transfer of the genes to the next generation so that the genes are perpetuated. These are the dominant instincts. And more or less, that sums up the animal behavior. But human beings, for a variety of reasons, we develop language, the speech, therefore the transfer of knowledge. We developed brain power. Not because we consciously did it, but evolution gave us the brain power. We have the need to raise children for several years, unlike any other animal. We require 14, 15 years of nurturing and caring for children to become meaningful adults. All these created a unique human society. Of large numbers of people beyond family and kinship, beyond genetic sharing. People whom you don't know, you have to work together in a religion, in a nation, or in a company, or in a set of ideas, an organization, or an institution, or a factory. We all have to work together. And therefore, we require deep debates and a deeper understanding of this reconciliation, citizenship, individual, and the collective. I would say the simple principle, the simple yardstick is, each of us is entitled to pursue our goals, our dreams. We don't have to apologize to anybody. You have to survive, you have to live, you have to live with dignity, you have dreams, you have aspirations, you have hopes, you have talent, and you have desires. And fulfilling them, and raising yourself personally, fulfilling your dreams, and fulfilling your potential is your right. You do not have to apologize to anybody, let me repeat. But in pursuing my personal goals, if I am hurting the collective, the others, it becomes a zero-sum game. It becomes destructive. If each person behaves in a manner detrimental to other people's interests, then everybody's interests are adversely affected. All of us suffer. All of us lose. It's foolish. It's not merely God's dictate or Ten Commandments or Punya or Papa. 
It's about common sense. It's not sustainable. Therefore, the fundamental reconciliation in our society, any society should be individual goals and individual gain and collective good and collective rights. So those people are responsible and accountable citizens who can reconcile individual goals with collective good. One is not at the cost of the other. If my fulfillment of desires and dreams is at the cost of you and your desires and your dreams, then there's a problem. They are being irresponsible, if not being outright criminal. That depends on the law of criminality part of it. But they are, not, they are irresponsible. They are not creating a, a functioning, harmonious, productive society. They are creating a dysfunctional, anarchic, dangerous society. Therefore, the central issue is, am I pursuing my goals in harmony with the collective good? If my pursuit of goals is actually improving the lives of others, that is the best case. At the very least, my pursuit of goals should not be affecting your pursuit of goals. That's why they say, your nose, sir, your freedom, sir, stops where my nose begins. You can exercise freedom, but only until the other person is not affected by your exercise of freedom. And of course, the worst case scenario is, if my pursuit of goals is at the cost of the society, the larger goals of the society, that is irresponsible, outright criminal, unacceptable behavior. So I think there is a way of addressing that. In my view, almost all religions and philosophies, they really try to reconcile this individual gain with public good. Whatever the language they used, whatever the mythology they created, whatever the superstitions or beliefs they propagated, at the heart of it is this issue of reconciling the individual behavior and goals with the larger collective good. And I think that yardstick is as relevant today as it was throughout the ages. I hope um, Chaitanya, that gives us a sense, no? These are very deep philosophical questions and great seers and thinkers, they give us much more profound insights. But I think as a basic tool to recognize what makes sense in terms of our behavior in dealing with the rest of the society, I think this yardstick, this simple principle will help us a great deal. And thank you for that question.